Okay, we welcome you in here on VSIN, the Sports Betting Network. This is the debut of the Everything Guide to Sports Betting. My name's Patrick Maher, live from Vegas, but more importantly, one third on the weekends of the Lombardi Line and the author of the Everything Guide to Sports Betting, Josh Applebaum. You can find Josh at Josh underscore insights. And as we welcome in Josh, we say, good afternoon, Josh. How are you? Excited. I'm really, really excited to get this show up and running. And really, I think our goal overall, we want to approach this show a little differently than uh, than other shows. We want to, uh, our number one goal is to inform you, educate you. And what we're going to be doing is analyzing the sports betting market across the board. So the goal isn't just to, uh, t- here's a pick, take this pick, take that pick. No, we want to um, basically peel back the onion and teach the basics of sports betting. And I think the key here is that, with uh, the legalization of sports betting really sweeping across the nation in 2018, we saw the Supreme Court overturn the federal ban on sports betting. And really, it's a betting renaissance that's taking place across the gl- across the country. And as a result, there are millions and millions of new sports bettors entering the market for the first time. However, when you're a new sports better, you really don't know where to start. Uh, it's tough. You have a lot of questions. You don't know the rules of the road. And as a result, uh, this can really, really make a steep learning curve and really, um, you know, kind of frustrate a lot of new betters because there's uh, there's a lot to learn. And if you don't know where to start and you can't lean on um, kind of information and, and rules of the road that can help you, it can really, really be a tough start overall. So um, truly honored at VEASAN to basically have a show that's focusing on informing betters and following the market and trying not to bet with your heart, but with your head. And really the approach that I'm going to be stressing on throughout the show is uh, contrarian betting and data-driven sports betting overall. Um, But I'm really excited to be a part of it, uh, and I really can't wait to get started. So uh, come on in. Hello and welcome to the Everything Guide to Sports Betting. We're going to make a concerted effort to educate, inform, analyze the betting market to give you the better, whether sharp or just getting involved an opportunity to become a more sophisticated, better. Now, something, you know, Josh and I, we always joke about the term contrarian. You hear that you're going the other way, but to be honest and to be fair, if you want to make money long-term with the tax and vigorous associated with gambling, sometimes you have to be looked at as an outsider. And Josh, before we get into the season win totals, I think that's an important note. You know, oftentimes people that are different are judged, but in this type of industry where it's so competitive, oftentimes you have to zig while others are zagging. That's exactly right, Patrick. You know, when I first started betting on sports, you know, I'm 32 years old now. I really started when I was 18, 19 years old. And kind of what I did is I bet as a public better. And I've kind of been on both sides of this because early on sports betting, what do you want to do? You want to make money, obviously, but you want to bet on your favorite teams. You want to bet on teams with the most star players. You want to focus on the big games and you want to bet on winners and you want to bet on teams that you think are just layups and will obviously win. But, you know, the thing that I always come back to being contrarian is number one, if betting like an average Joe or betting as quote unquote, a public better, a recreational better, a casual better, if that was the case and you know, you could bet every favorite psychological bias toward betting favorites, you know, betting a total, you want to bet an over because you want to see a lot of points scored and a lot of action and, and really betting on home teams and big name teams and teams with a better record. That all is very obvious, but the thing is betting like that is not going to make you a winner long-term because if betting in that direction was really profitable, you know, average Joe's would make would be millionaires and the sports books would really go bankrupt. So the fact that that betting strategy isn't, you know, a winner outward, you have to look and, you know, when you, when the public zigs, you want to zag. I always kind of go to the fact of you walk into a bar or, uh, you know, a, you know, a place where you know, regular people are hanging out and they're betting that Monday night football game. If the whole crowd is rooting for one team, you probably want to be on the other side because you got to remember the odds makers. It's not just betting against average Joe's who more often not they lose. It's also the fact that long-term the house always wins. So if you can bet against the public, uh, you'll place yourself on the side of the house that, you know, that's half the battle, but you can't just always go contrarian. You got to be specific. You got to be selective. You got to go where the public is. So really focusing on heavily bet games, heavily bet sports, primetime games. If the game is on TV, that means a lot of recreational bettors will be betting on it, you know, especially primetime, seven o'clock, eight o'clock games, heavily bet spots. Hold on to it. Don't, don't give it all away. He's got so much information. Yeah. I want to get there as we continue bankroll building tactics as well. Coming up as we welcome you in here on VSIN, the sports betting network. Hope you're having a great Monday. We're thrilled to do this, Josh and I. It is the debut of the everything guide to sports betting, an opportunity for you to learn while we have some downtime here to become a more sophisticated better. And we were just talking about it. We're going to get into bankroll, bankroll building tactics and, you know, the Pythagorean theorem and all of that 
That's plenty, okay? We've got plenty to get to. But let's start with something pretty basic that I think oftentimes trips up a casual better, and that is futures betting. And we'll start with season win totals, Josh, and we'll just start with the origination of a season win total. Yeah, so I think a lot of new bettors think, you know, if there's a game, you can bet on it, and that's really your only option. But if you want to be a professional sports better, if you just want to be a better better in general, you got to know what's available to you. So uh, one thing outside of betting, you know, a regular game that's on TV is looking at futures and specifically win totals. You know, if you think of futures, you think of who will win the Super Bowl. You can place a bet before the season. You can, you know, get a team plus a thousand and they win. You make a lot of money. Um, but really win totals are where there's a lot of value across the market. So what is a win total? Basically what the odds makers do is they're going to set an over under for each team and all the major sports. And then you can bet on whether or not that team will go over or under that win total. So win totals, they're available across the market. You know, pretty much every sport has them. But the big, most popular one is football. So football, uh, you know, NFL is king, obviously, for gamblers. But same thing with college football overall. So, for example, you're looking at the Las Vegas Raiders win total. Right now it's 7, minus 110 across the board. That minus 110 is the juice you would have to pay. So you'd have to lay 110 bucks in order to win 100, depending on which side you want to bet on. But for example, you do your research, you say, okay, I like the Raiders this year for reasons A, B, C, and D, which we'll get to throughout oh, reasons you want to focus on. But if you think they'll have a good year, you think they'll go eight and eight or better, you would bet the overwin total. You know, if you think they're going to struggle and they're in a tough division and uh, they're too overhyped and you don't like uh, their strength of schedule for whatever reasons you have there, you could bet the under seven. And in order for you to cash, they would have to go six and 10 or worse. And then if they go, um, you know, seven and nine, they land on that win total of seven, you would push that bet, which means you would just get your money back. So it's important with win totals, knowing that, you know, you can bet every, all the different teams, which we'll get to a bunch today, uh, which are really important. Um, but you got to know across the market, uh, your options, different prices. We'll talk about shopping for the best line. Uh, but win totals are a hugely valuable opportunity for bettors. And today we're going to talk about what you should look for to make a smart win total bet. Okay, great job, Josh. Now, season win totals is, and this is a lesson that was hard for me to come by, and I learned it early on in my betting career. It is important to have multiple outs. You may scoff at the idea, just have one bookie, one book. It's important always to increase the probability of getting the better number. This racket, which is sports betting, it's a razor thin margin because of that tax you're paying as far as between a good and an average better and a loser, but losing better and a good better, not too many betters win. You follow VEASAN, you follow these principles, you can. It's important though. It is absolutely important to have multiple outs. And I'll give you an example when it comes to season win totals. Okay. So let's jump into this, Josh. We'll use the Colts as an example. The Colts mostly across the board are set at eight and a half. As far as their season win totals, they're the favorites in the AFC South this year. And their season win total set at eight and a half. However, you know, the over is juiced up to 121 at DraftKings. It's juiced up all the way to 160 at FanDuel. So the idea between 125 juice and 160, if you're betting that over on the Colts, that could be the difference between winning and losing money over the long run. So the thing with win totals that I like to look at is where is the juice? The juice is basically the price on every win total. And by tracking the juice and looking at the price of the juice across the market, you can really get insight into where is the sharp action, where is the liability. It can really help you make a smarter bet overall. So there are definitely outliers in terms of different books with different juice. But the key to me is when the market is just totally in agreement. That's telling you that no matter the clientele, where they're located, regional bias, it doesn't matter. They're all on the same page, which really gives you insight into, okay, that's a pretty sharp bet that I might think uh, might want to think about making. So a good example that going into this NFL year season uh, is the Indianapolis Colts. They went seven and nine last year. Obviously, you had Andrew Luck retire. Uh, they started off great. They really tailed off late. Uh, but we're seeing across the market a ton of sharp juice actually coming in on the Colts over. So their total is set at eight and a half. And again, if you're a new better, don't just look at the win total. Look at that juice across the board at DraftKings. The over eight and a half is listed at minus 125. At FanDuel, it's over eight and a half, minus 160. At points bet, it's minus 136. To the over eight and a half. So what is that telling you? It's telling you that no matter what the sports book, all the liability seems to be on that Colts over. Anytime you see that that high juice number, and typically you know standard juice is minus one ten. So that high juice would be typically minus one fifteen, minus one twenty or more. That's telling you that. 
the books have taken in a lot of action on the Colts over eight and a half. He was just going through some of it. And I, I think it's almost impossible to stress. And we can't stress it enough here on Beeson. You know, the sharp, Paul, uh, you know, Paulie and Mitch and Gil, they all understand this and they teach it better than anybody. It's razor thin becoming a winner and becoming a loser in sports betting. And frankly, most lose a lot of it comes down to getting the best number. As a matter of fact, to use season win totals as an example, oftentimes you're going to find a book that has a season win total set at eight and a half on one team and another book that has it set at eight. We're talking about a 16 game, 16 game season. So the idea of a half a win, just think about in general, how much implied value is in that half of game. So again, if you just have one book and you're just betting into one book, you don't really have anything to measure it against. You never want to do that. It's absolutely reckless to be fair, have multiple outs, find them. That's going to be the difference between a winning better and a better. We continue along here on the everything guide to sports betting. We've got Josh. Now I think this one's important as far as a tenant when betting season win totals, and that's avoiding media hype. That's incredibly important, Patrick. Yeah, I think, you know, when you talk about avoiding media hype, you got to remember that sports books, um, you know, they're setting lines with public bias in mind. So who, do, who does recreational bettors, casual bettors flock to? They flock to teams that are, they're on TV a lot. You know, they're on covers of magazines. They're, uh, they're talked about on sports talk radio and on ESPN. So as a result, a lot of public bettors are really going to fall into media narrative and media bias. And if you see constant hyping up of a specific team, you always want to remember that, you know, value is all about buying low and selling high. So a perfect example would be um, the uh, the Cleveland Browns. So the Cleveland Browns last year, they made a big splash. The other thing with NFL win totals is um, these markets are set very early. Public bettors are dying to bet uh, football. So what are they going to go off of? They're going to go off of um, what have you done for me lately? And what's the buzz um, today, yesterday, and, and, in, and in the recent uh, past? So you're going to see who wins the off season. This creates a narrative and this creates basically the overvaluing of specific teams. So you want to just not fall into the hype of betting a game because you're being pounded by uh, media narrative or media hype. You want to basically take that away, ignore the noise, try to find the signal amongst the noise and really make a bet based on data uh, that you can quantify, not because a talking head is talking you into betting a specific bet, to, you know, bet up or down. Well put, Josh. Now, this one may seem obvious, but to a casual better, I don't know if it is. And that is public leans over. OK, let's jump into the concept of the public generally going to bet over on these season win totals. Yeah, I think when I go into season win totals or just betting a game in general, you know, the two questions I always ask are where is the public and where are the sharp betters? That's really going to tell you 90 percent of the story overall. The other half is getting the best number. Timing is everything. Placing your bet before that number moves. Um, but when you're looking at um, basically, you know, public leaning over, you got to put yourself in and we're all, we've all, the, the key here is that we've all been new betters. We've all been betters, uh, with, with biases and, and narratives and things that we fall into. So you got to remember psychologically public betters want to go over. Why? Because you want to root for a team to do well. It's much more fun to root for a team to do well than it is for a team to do poorly. So the, the, the odds makers bake this into the cake. And as a result, they're going to basically shade these numbers, which means that they're going to set these lines further to the overside. And the example, again, if you're betting a total, much more fun to root for an over than it is for an under. So really, you know, if you want to be sharp, you got to be aware of this bias that the public is putting on the over, because that means you're often paying higher prices, more expensive prices to bet an over. And in turn, that creates a lot of value uh, to bet basically uh, an underprice under. OK, and I really want to I really want to focus on this and stress the idea of strength of schedule. If you're looking at the East and, and you're taking into account Dallas, uh, obviously the Giants, Washington and Philadelphia. Well, that's six games in, in division. That's that's a two team race, right? I mean, just perceptively, that's a two team race. But let's go over that again. The strength of schedule uh, opponents record the previous year. You really have to dive into these. Really, really important, Patrick. Yeah. Strength of schedule. Basically, what that's telling you is. The, that team, the opponents that they're playing, how good or how or how bad they are. And basically what you do is you take the previous year, um, you basically do a win loss of all, um, you know, if a team has a 16 game schedule, they all do. What was the record of all their opponents the previous year? So strength of schedule is really important because if you see a team like, for example, the Patriots, you know, not only did they lose Tom Brady, which is rough, but they have the number one hardest schedule next year 
based on their opponent's uh, win-loss record from the previous year. So that's just something to take into account. It's not as easy as, okay, if they have the hardest schedule, it means i got to take the under. You know, on, on, in turn, if they have the easiest schedule, I want to take their win total over. But this is the sort of thing you want to look for. You want to take into account, go through, if you're going to bet a win total, go to that team, go through every single game, one through 16. Look at their strength of schedule. Look at their home versus road splits. So the Patriots would have the hardest strength of schedule. And of course, if, if it wasn't easy enough, team that won 14 and two last year, Baltimore, they have the easiest schedule. These are the sort of things you want to look for because it's not going to uh, make you basically bet a game with that only, you know, parameter in mind, but it's something you want to take into, into account. I obviously the easier schedule, more likely they're going to win more games, harder schedule, more likely they're going to lose more games. Okay. Season win totals here on the everything guide to sports betting. Josh Applebaum. I'm Patrick Maher live from Vegas. You're watching, you're listening to V sin the sports betting network. Now let's talk about this conceptually. This is a very important distinction. Okay. A futures play, a futures bet is one. You have to be disciplined. This is long-term Josh. Let's get into the concept of this. This ties up your bankroll for an extended period of time. A lot of gambling comes down to instinct. A lot of gambling comes down to instant gratification. A futures bet, a season win total is not going to provide that. Exactly. You got to have a lot of patience, but you shouldn't let the fact that you want instant gratification uh, to basically make you pass up a valuable opportunity. So, you know, Patrick, if I could uh, tell you, here's a hundred bucks, but you're going to have to wait nine months to get it. Would you say, no, I don't want the hundred bucks because I want it now. And if I can't have it now, I don't want it at all. No, there's value there. So I think um, the key is that don't get into the, uh, the mindset of if I want to bet something, I want to know tonight by midnight, whether or not it's going to cash or not. Hopefully it cashes. The fact that you have to be patient can really play to your benefit because we'll talk about it uh, a little bit later with the bankroll builder. You can use this as a supplementary tool. You can continue, you know, to do your daily grind of sports betting. But if you make some smart plays early, you put those smart win total bets in early, you can have a nice payout. Maybe even forget about it. You're going to root for every game for that team to do well or not, depending on your over or under. But it's a nice supplementary thing that you can put in your back pocket and really pad your bankroll overall. You just got to remember, patience is a virtue. Patience is really, really important when you're betting win totals. You got to know it's not going to pay out tonight, but it could pay out later and that you're still going to get that payout. So that's important. Okay, let's go over the tenants here to wrap up uh, betting totals and, and, again, individual team betting totals, which is a futures bet, okay? You're talking about strength of schedule. You got to go in deep. You really got to dive into these records, okay? Stability versus instability. We're talking returning players, returning starters, coach, quarterback. Is the philosophy the same with the new offense? Is there a new offensive coordinator? These are all paramount. The draft, okay? Stability versus instability. Avoid the media hype. This is, and I know growing up, this is one thing that really, really handcuffed me. And that is the media hype. You start to read something it picks up steam and perceptively the perception of that team of that player takes off. You got to look deeper into it. And again, public leans over. And I, again, I know it sounds basic, Josh, and a lot of this stuff to a sharp better is going to sound basic. We're trying to reaffirm these tenants because for a lot of people, the idea of the public betting over, so there being value therein on the under, it doesn't come as naturally. So we want to stress these tenants conti continuously here on the everything betting guide. Yeah, these are really, really important. I think the, the importance is that it's giving you a blueprint. It's giving you a guide. It's allowing you to have some parameters that you can focus on and basically help you make the smartest bet possible. Because in the end, you know, gambling is difficult. You can you can win, you can lose. But really, if you place yourself in the smartest position, you've done your homework, you're really going to increase winning overall so example here you know stability instability you really want to focus on teams that are returning the most starters that have a a foundation of uh, star players and coaching that's staying the same anytime a team has a new a new coach there's a big learning curve people got to know each other you have to set the offense the defense that's basically gonna hurt or basically um, kind of handcuff a new team and make their learning curve a lot harder versus a team that has a solid foundation and basically can lean on that foundation. So you kind of want to be wary of a team with a new coach, a new quarterback, a new star, bunch of new star players to acclimate to a new system. And you really want to lean on that, on those teams that have a really solid foundation because they know what they're doing and basically they can bring in new players, but the foundation is the same. So lean on stability and be wary of teams with instability, especially new head coaches. Yeah, the best way to put this, and I'll use an example that I think most can really grab onto. 
the Atlanta Falcons most believe Kyle Shanahan to be a brilliant play caller year one with Matt, Matt Ryan in Atlanta. It didn't go well. They had to implement the system. They needed a full year for Matt Ryan to get very comfortable in that system year two. He's an MVP. Okay. So the idea of just thinking, okay, Shanahan Ryan together, that's an over on a futures play on season win total. That's not the way it works. Okay. So take a step back and understand what's happening conceptually with the whole entire team. Now, the most important thing for any better, everybody will agree across the board, is going to be your bankroll, your management of your bankroll. Okay, so what we're going to do here on the Everything Guide to Sports Betting with Josh Applebaum and myself, Patrick Maher on VSIN, is we're going to consistently daily give you betting 101 bankroll management tips. Okay, this more than anything will prove whether or not you're good, you could stay in your shoes when gambling and become a long-term winner, or you're going to end up being a loser because those impetuous, I need to get out of a hole bets aren't going to cut it. That's why Josh is going to deliver the bankroll builder. Okay. We're thrilled to be here on the debut show. We're going to be here every Monday through Friday on the everything guide to sports betting. We continue along, go to vsin.com. You missed anything. If you missed a daily newsletter, Josh is involved in that as well. Just go to vsin.com, enter your email address, and you'll get it every day in your inbox. Okay? At vsin live on Twitter if you missed anything as far as social. We come back with bankroll management right here on the Everything Guide to Sports Betting.
If you didn't catch VSIN last week, here's some of what you missed. Taking a look at a number and it looks too good to be true. Just makes no sense. This is something you have to be aware of, Josh. Yeah, and you're going to learn very quickly betting on sports that there are situations that make absolutely no sense, and it seems like a layup. And a long, you know, a thing that'll take you a long way in betting is if it looks too good to be true, chances are that it is. You know, I don't really believe specifically in a trap game overall, but that's the sort of mentality. If it looks too good to be true, be careful and be wary. And a good example would be the Detroit Lions. You know, they go 3-12 and 1 last year, a three-win team. You think, okay, uh, they're going to maybe win. Maybe they do a little better. Maybe they win four games. Maybe they win five. Um, but why is the number set at six and a half right off the bat? That's telling you that, you know, it, it's like, how do you not take the under? Clayton Kershaw is on the mound. The total in a baseball game is, is seven and a half. How do you not take the under? The book set these lines with public bias in mind. So they're setting this number so high. And I would bet a vast, vast majority of casual bettors say, Team won three win, three win, uh, three games last year. I have to take that under. But number one, it's set too high to begin with. That seems fishy. And then also look at the look at the juice across the board. The over, um, the over six and a half is juiced up. So it's minus 118, minus 125, minus 121. So why is the line so high and why is it being juiced up? It tells you often it's too good to be true. So even though they won three games last year. Books are kind of telling you why are they making you pay a higher price on something that seems like it can't happen because most likely they're sharps and there's a lot of value on possibly the over here improving and going and going seven and nine or better. Uh, would you draft this guy? What are, what are the implications? I get that there's this long list of injuries, uh, but if you really delve into players, there are many players with a long list of injuries. Tua gets exposed because that's who he is. He's a guy who, was, in theory, was the top pick in the draft until the, the most recent uh, hip issue. I mean, a finger fracture? Guys, come on. First of all, that was years ago. Second of all, do you know how many players have had finger fractures or dislocated fingers? I mean, if we really want to report all of them, uh, I am aware of uh, five NFL quarterbacks this last season who injured digits significantly, either a fracture or something equivalent to that. New to VEASAN? The best way to learn more about sports betting and how VEASAN can help you is to sign up for our free daily email. You'll receive an email every morning with show highlights and expert insights. Sign up for free today at VEASAN.com slash email. That's VSIN.com slash email. 